And now chapter 12 of the Antya Leela, the loving dealings between Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagadananda Pandit. O devotees, may the transcendental life and characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu be always heard, chanted, and meditated upon with great happiness. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is all merciful. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu, who is an ocean of mercy. All glories to Advaita Charya, who is also an ocean of mercy. All glories to all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whose hearts are always filled with mercy. The mind of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always morose because of a continuously manifested feeling of separation from Krishna. The Lord would cry, Oh, my Lord Krishna, my life and soul, O oh, son of Maharaj Nanda, where shall I go? Where shall I attain you? O oh, Supreme Personality who plays with your flute to your mouth! This was his situation, day and night. Unable to find peace of mind, he passed his nights with great difficulty in the company of Svarup Damada and Ramananda Rai. Meanwhile, all the devotees journeyed from their homes in Bengal to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Headed by Shivananda Sain, Advaita Acharya and others, all the devotees assembled in Navadvip. The inhabitants of Kulina Gram and Kanda village also assembled at Navadvip. Because Nityananda Prabhu was preaching in Bengal, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had ordered him not to come to Jagannath Puri. That year, however, he went with the rest of the party to see the Lord. Srivas Thakur was also there with his three brothers and his wife Malini. Acharya Ratna was similarly accompanied by his wife. The wife of Srivananda Sain also came along with their three sons. Raghava Pandit joined them carrying his famous bags of food. Vasudev Dat, Murari Gupta, Vidya Nidhi and many other devotees went to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All together they numbered two or three hundred. The devotees first saw Shachi Mata and took her permission. Then in great happiness they started for Jagannath Puri, congregationally chanting the holy name of the Lord. Shivananda Sain managed the payment of tolls at different places. Maintaining everyone, he guided all the devotees in great happiness. Shivananda Sain took care of everyone and gave each devotee places to stay. He knew all the paths leading to Orissa. One day, when the party was being checked by a toll collector, the devotees were allowed to pass, and Shivananda Sain remained behind, alone, to pay the taxes. The party went into a village and waited beneath a tree because no one but Shivananda Sain could arrange for their residential quarters. Nityananda Prabhu, meanwhile, became very hungry and upset. Because he had not yet obtained a suitable residence, he began calling Shivananda Sain ill names. He complained, Shivananda Sain has not arranged for my residence, and I am so hungry I could die. Because he has not come, I curse his three sons to die. Hearing this curse, Shivananda Sain's wife began to cry. Just then, Shivananda returned from the toll station. Crying, his wife informed him, Lord Nityananda has cursed our sons to die because his quarters have not been provided. Shivananda Sain replied, You crazy woman, why are you needlessly crying? Let my three sons die for all the inconvenience we have caused Nityananda Prabhu. After saying this, Shivananda Sain went to Nityananda Prabhu, who then stood up and kicked him. Very pleased at being kicked, Shivananda Sain quickly arranged for a milkman's house to be the Lord's residence. Shivananda Sain touched the lotus feet of Nityananda Prabhu and led him to his residence. After giving the Lord his quarters, Shivananda Sain, being very pleased, spoke as follows. 
Today you have accepted me as your servant and have properly punished me for my offense. My dear Lord, your chastising me is your causeless mercy. Who within the three worlds can understand your real character? The dust of your lotus feet is not attainable even by Lord Brahma. Yet, yet, your lotus feet have touched my wretched body. Today my birth, my family, and my activities have all become successful. Today I have achieved the fulfillment of religious principles, economic development, satisfaction of the senses, and ultimately devotional service to Lord Sri Krishna. When Lord Nityananda heard this, he was very happy. He rose and embraced Shivananda Sain in great love. Being very pleased by Nityananda Prabhu's behavior, Shivananda Sain began to arrange residential quarters for all the Vaishnavas headed by Advaitacharya. One of Sri Nityananda Prabhu's characteristics is his contradictory nature. When he becomes angry and kicks someone, it is actually to his benefit. Shivananda Sain's nephew, Sri Kanta, the son of his sister, felt offended and he commented on the matter when his uncle was absent. My uncle is well known as one of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but Lord Nityananda Prabhu asserts his superiority by kicking him. After saying this, Sri Kanta, who was only a boy, left the group and traveled on alone to the residence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Sri Kanta offered obeisances to the Lord, he was still wearing his shirt and coat. Therefore Govinda told him, My dear Sri Kanta, first take off these garments. As Govinda was warning Sri Kanta, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Don't bother him. Let Sri Kanta do whatever he likes, for he has come here in a distressed state of mind. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired from Sri Kanta about all the Vaishnavas, and the boy informed the Lord about them, naming them one after another. When Sri Kanta Sain heard the Lord say, He is distressed, he could understand that the Lord is omniscient. As he described the Vaishnavas, therefore, he did not mention Lord Nityananda's kicking Shivananda Sain. Meanwhile, all the devotees arrived and went to meet the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu received them all, just as he had in previous years. The women, however, saw the Lord from a distance. The Lord again arranged for the residential quarters of all the devotees and thereafter called them to partake of the remnants of food offered to Lord Jagannath. Shivananda Sain introduced his three sons to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because they were his sons, the Lord showed the boys great mercy. Lord Chaitanya asked the youngest son's name, and Shivananda Sain informed the Lord that his name was Parmananda Das. Once before, when Shivananda Sain had visited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at his residence, the Lord had told him, when this son is born, give him the name Puri Das. The son was in the womb of his wife, and when he returned home, the son was born. The child was named Parmananda Das, in accordance with the Lord's order, and the Lord jokingly called him Puri Das. When Shivananda Sain introduced the child to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord put his toe in the child's mouth. No one can cross over the ocean of Shivananda Sain's good fortune, for the Lord considered Shivananda's whole family his own. The Lord ate lunch in the company of all the other devotees, and after washing his hands and mouth, he gave an order to Govinda. He said, As long as Shivananda Sain's wife and children stay in Jagannath Puri, they must be given the remnants of my food. There was a resident of Nadia named Paramishbar, who was a confectioner living near the home of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the Lord was a boy, he would visit the house of Paramishbar Modak again and again. The confectioner would supply the Lord milk and sweetmeats, and the Lord would eat them. Paramishbar Modak had been affectionate toward the Lord since his childhood, and he was one of those who came that year to see the Lord at Jagannath Puri. When he offered his obeisances to the Lord, he said, I am the same Paramishva. Upon seeing him, the Lord asked him questions with great affection. 
He said, Parmeshvar, may you be blessed. It is very good that you have come here. Parmeshvar then informed the Lord, Mukundara Mata has also come. Hearing the name of Mukundara Mata, Lord Chaitanya hesitated, but because of affection for Parmeshvar, he did not say anything. An intimate relationship sometimes makes a person overstep formal etiquette. Thus, Parmeshvar actually pleased the Lord in his heart by his simple and affectionate behavior. All the devotees engaged in the cleansing ceremony of the Gundicha temple and danced in front of the Rathayatra cart just as they had done in the past. For four consecutive months, the devotees observed all the festivals. The wives, such as Malini, extended invitations for lunch to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. From Bengal, the devotees had brought varieties of Bengali food that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liked. They also cooked various grains and vegetables in their homes and offered them to the Lord. During the day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu engaged in various activities with his devotees, but at night he felt great separation from Krishna and used to cry. In this way, the Lord spent the four months of the rainy season in various pastimes, and then he ordered the Bengali devotees to return to their homes. All the devotees from Bengal would regularly invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for lunch, and the Lord would speak to them in very sweet words. He said, All of you come to see me every year. To come here and then return must certainly give you great trouble. I would like to forbid you to do this, but I enjoy your company so much that my desire for your association only increases. I ordered Sri Nityananda Prabhu not to leave Bengal, but he has transgressed my order and come to see me. <laughs> what can I say? Out of his causeless mercy upon me, Advaita Charya has also come. I am indebted to him for his affectionate behavior. This debt is impossible for me to liquidate. All my devotees come here just for me. Leaving aside their homes and families, they travel by very difficult paths to come here in great haste. There is no fatigue or trouble for me, for I stay here at Nilachal, Jagannath Puri, and do not move at all. This is the favor of all of you. I am a mendicant and have no money. How can I clear my debt for the favor you have shown me? I have only this body, and therefore I surrender it unto you. Now, if you wish, you may sell it anywhere you like. It is your property. When all the devotees heard these sweet words of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their hearts melted, and they began to shed incessant tears. Catching hold of his devotees, the Lord embraced them all and began to cry and cry. Unable to leave, everyone remained there, and five to seven more days thus passed by. Advaita Prabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu submitted these words at the Lord's lotus feet. The entire world is naturally obligated to you for your transcendental attributes. Yet you bind your devotees again with your sweet words. Under these circumstances, who can go anywhere? Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu peacefully calmed them all and bade each of them farewell. The Lord specifically advised Nityananda Prabhu, You should not come here again and again. You will have my association in Bengal. The devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began their journey, crying while the Lord remained morosely at his residence. The Lord bound everyone by his transcendental mercy. Who can repay his debt? for the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the fully independent personality of Godhead and makes everyone dance as he likes. Leaving his company, therefore, all the devotees return to their homes in different parts of the country. As a wooden doll dances to the will of a puppeteer, everything is accomplished by the will of the Lord. Who can understand the characteristics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? The previous year, Jagannanda Pandit, following the Lord's order, had returned to the city of Nadia to see Shachi Mata. When he arrived, he offered prayers at her lotus feet and then offered her the cloth and prasad of Lord Jagannath. He offered obeisances to Sachimata in the name of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
and informed her of all the Lord's submissive prayers to her. Jagadananda's coming pleased Mother Sachi very much. As he talked of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she listened day and night. Jagadananda Pandit said, My dear mother, sometimes the Lord comes here and eats all the food you have offered. After eating the food, the Lord says, Today, mother has fed me up to my neck. I go there and eat the food my mother offers, but she cannot understand that I am eating it directly. She thinks that this is a dream. Sachimata said, I wish Nimai would eat all the nice vegetables I cook. That is my desire. Sometimes I think that Nimai has eaten them, but afterwards I think that I was only dreaming. In this way, Jagadananda Pandit and Mother Shachi talked day and night about the happiness of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jagadananda Pandit met all the other devotees in Nadia. They were all very happy to have him present. Jagadananda Pandit thereafter went to meet Advaita Acharya, who also was very happy to have him. Vasudev Dutt and Murari Gupta were so pleased to see Jagadananda Pandit that they kept him at their homes and would not allow him to leave. They heard confidential narrations about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the mouth of Jagadananda Pandit and forgot themselves in the great happiness of hearing about the Lord. Whenever Jagadananda Pandit went to visit a devotee's house, that devotee immediately forgot himself in great happiness. All glories to Jagadananda Pandit. He is so favored by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that anyone who meets him thinks, Now I have gotten the association of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. Jagadananda Pandit stayed at Shivananda Sain's house for some time, and they prepared about sixteen sears of scented sandalwood oil. They filled a large earthen pot with the aromatic oil, and with great care Jagadananda Pandit brought it to Nilachal or Jagannath Puri. This oil was placed in the care of Govinda, and Jagadananda requested him, Please rub this oil on the body of the Lord. Govinda therefore told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jagadananda Pandit has brought some scented sandalwood oil. It is his desire that your Lordship apply a little of this oil on your head, so that blood pressure due to bile and air will be considerably diminished. He prepared a large jug of it in Bengal, and with great care he has brought it here. The Lord replied, A sannyasi has no use for oil, especially perfumed oil such as this. Take it out immediately. Deliver this oil to the temple of Jagannath, where it may be burned in the lamps. In this way, Jagadananda's labor to manufacture the oil will be perfectly successful. When Govinda informed Jagadananda Pandit of this message, Jagadananda remained silent, not saying even a word. When ten days had passed, Govinda again told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, It is the desire of Jagadananda Pandit that your lordship accept the oil. When the lord heard this, he angrily said, Why not keep a masur to massage me? Have I taken sannyas for such happiness? Accepting this oil would bring me ruination, and all of you would laugh. If someone passing on the road smelled this oil on my head, he would think of me as a dari sannyasi, a tantric sannyasi who keeps women. Hearing these words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Govinda remained silent. The next morning, Jagadananda went to see the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Jagadananda Pandit, My dear Pandit, you have brought me some oil from Bengal, but since I am in the renounced order, well, I, I can't accept it. Deliver the oil to the temple of Jagannath, so that it may be burned in the lamps. Thus your labor in preparing the oil will be fruitful. Jagadananda Pandit replied, who tells you all these false stories? I never brought any oil from Bengal. After saying this, Jagadananda Pandit took the jug of oil from the room and threw it down before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the courtyard and broke it. After breaking the jug, Jagadananda Pandit returned to his residence, bolted the door, and lay down. Three days later, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the door of his room and said, My dear Jagadananda Pandit, please get up. I want you personally to cook my lunch today. I am going now to see the Lord in the temple. I shall return at noon. After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said this and left, Jagadananda Pandit got up from his bed, bathed, and began to cook varieties of vegetables. 
After finishing his noontime ritualistic duties, the Lord arrived for lunch. Jagadananda Pandit washed the Lord's feet and gave the Lord a sitting place. He had cooked fine rice, mixed it with ghee, and piled it high on a banana leaf. There were also varieties of vegetables placed all around in pots made of banana tree bark. On the rice and vegetables were tulsi flowers, and in front of the Lord were cakes, sweet rice, and other prasad of Jagannath. The Lord said, Spread another leaf with a helping of rice and vegetables, so that today you and I may take lunch together. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept his hands raised and would not accept the prasad until Jagadananda Pandit, with great affection and love, spoke the following words. Please first take prasad yourself, and I shall eat later. I shall not refuse your request. In great happiness, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then accepted the lunch. When he had tasted the vegetables, he again began to speak. He said, Even when you cook in an angry mood, the food is very tasteful. This shows how pleased Krishna is with you. Because he will personally eat the food, Krishna makes you cook so nicely. You offer such nectar and rice to Krishna. Who can estimate the limit of your fortune? Jagadananda Pandit replied, He who will eat has cooked this. As far as I am concerned, I simply collect the ingredients. Jagadananda Pandit continued to offer the Lord varieties of vegetables. Out of fear, the Lord said nothing, but continued eating happily. Jagadananda Pandit eagerly forced the Lord to eat so much that he ate ten times more than on other days. Again and again, when the Lord wished to get up, Jagadananda Pandit would feed him more vegetables. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dared not forbid him to feed him more. He just continued eating, fearful that Jagadananda would fast if he stopped. At last, the Lord respectfully submitted, My dear Jagadananda, you have already made me eat ten times more than I am used to. Now, please stop! Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stood up and washed his hands and mouth while Jagadananda brought spices, a garland, and sandalwood pulp. Accepting the sandalwood pulp and garland, the Lord sat down and said, Now, in front of me, you must eat. Jagadananda replied, My Lord, you go take rest. I shall take prasad after I finish making some arrangements. Ramai Pandit and Raghunath Bhatta did the cooking, and I want to give them some rice and vegetables. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then told Govinda, You remain here. When the Pandit has taken his food, come inform me. After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had said this and left, Jagadana Pandit spoke to Govinda, Go quickly and massage the Lord's feet. You may tell him, The Pandit has just sat down to take his meal. I shall keep some remnants of the Lord's food for you. When he is asleep, come and take your portion. Jagadananda Pandit thus distributed remnants of the Lord's food to Ramai, Nandai, Govinda, and Raghunath Bhatta. He also personally ate the remnants of food left by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then the Lord again sent Govinda. The Lord told him, Go see whether Jagadananda Pandit is eating, then quickly return and let me know. Seeing that Jagadananda Pandit was indeed eating, Govinda informed the Lord, who then became peaceful and went to sleep. The affectionate, loving exchanges between Jagadananda Pandit and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued in this manner exactly like the exchanges between Satyabhama and Lord Krishna related in Srimad Bhagavatam. Who can estimate the limit of Jagadananda Pandit's fortune? He himself is the example of his own great fortune. Anyone who hears about the loving exchanges between Jagadananda Pandit and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or who reads Jagadananda's book, Prema Vivarta, can understand what love is. Moreover, he achieves ecstatic love of Krishna. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends chapter 12 of the Antya Lila, the Lord's dealings with Jagadananda Pandit. <laughs>